Welcome to KimCast Art. We've got an exciting video for you today. We're going to do a fall scene. And believe it or not, we've only got just a few tools to use. So, first we're going to use a knife. It's not one of the ones like Bob Ross uses. We have a number one liner brush. Right there. And a number two liner brush. And you can use a flat brush too, a small flat brush would be fine. And we're going to use this like a little paint brush, basically a varnish brush, probably an uh, inch and a quarter inch wide, something like that. And the main ingredient today, a ball of tin foil. Just roll up about a foot of tin foil into a ball and you got it. That's how we're going to do the leaves on the trees. So make sure you give us a thumbs up share like the video consider joining our patreon or our membership for the channel it all helps a great deal and click that bell and subscribe and uh, so you can be notified of the future videos enjoy the video leave comments thank you okay let's get started on our new little project here doing the fall scene as you can see i've got some uh, brushes there and a uh, a palette knife, some spray bottle of water, which I missed over. That's a 12 by 12 canvas. And uh, I'm not, we don't actually use the the flat brushes. We got some tin foil balled up, which I explained about how to do that already. And make sure you mist your paint a little bit now and then so that you keep it wet. It's acrylic, acrylic dries pretty fast. So uh, any brush will do. I like the Bob Ross one inch brush will work just as well as that particular flat brush and we've got our colors here um, we've got some sap green burnt umber orange Indian yellow and cad yellow and orange so right now we're putting up some we're a little, we're a little bit below halfway there uh, that's where our horizon line is going to be because there's going to be water there too so so we can move around however we want to do that so now I'm putting on some cad yellow. And we're just putting it into special little spots here. Just keep a note where the spots are I'm putting it. It's not real critical. If you want orange, you can put orange there. But I'm putting uh, cad yellow right there. Actually, that's uh, yeah, cad yellow. And uh, we've got some... Indian yellow coming up here, which is a little bit darker, more of an orangey color. I'm going to put that in between. Nothing to it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same spot. You're going to move that around with your knife anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm just picking some random spots, basically got an idea in my head where I want the colors to be. If you want to focus on more orangey colors, you can do that too. Okay, in fact, now we've got the uh, orange going in. Right up the top there, we've got burnt umber. We want the edges to be a little bit darker up in them areas. Later we'll be using some Payne's Gray also. If you don't have Payne's Gray, you can use a little bit of black. Mix it with the burnt umber. I mix the Payne's Gray when I do the trees, just the trunk. I'll mix a little bit of that burnt umber and Payne's Gray. So I just start to move the knife around, just spreading the paint. Basically, I'm spraying the paint. And you should not be getting dry here at all right yet. I'm wiping the knife off a little bit here and there when I don't want to contaminate it too much. I just use some paper towels and I'm just kind of blending them colors a little bit together here and there, spreading them out. There's no real special way. We're just moving some color around the canvas and basically we're getting paint all over the canvas.
As you can see, it looks like it's going to be a sloppy mess. And basically it is right now. <laughs> but that's okay. We don't mind at all. We're just putting some paint on, having fun with it. And that's the whole idea. We want to have fun. Leave a little bit of uh, white around, some specks in the middle there and stuff for sunlight to come through. You know, I want some light to come through. I didn't leave as much white as I should have. You can always add a little bit of white later on if you want some more light. And I think I probably did, but I wasn't being quite as careful as I should have been. So I'm just gonna very carefully just, and I'm not pushing that really that hard. I am getting, uh, pushing a little bit harder on the edges and if you notice I actually have some three-quarter inch tape all the way around the canvas because I'm gonna let the canvas act as its own frame when we're done so if, I'm not sure if you can see that or not but you, you can barely see the yellow from the mastic tape or masking tape rather but I'm making you really sure and, and make sure that tape is really stuck down good especially where the paint's coming up to it because you don't want to breathe through the bottom of it or underneath it. So we've, we're getting the paint spread around pretty well. You can see, you can tell there's some grassy areas. I'm just taking the tin foil. I'm just kind of pushing it and rolling it around. You have to kind of work it. Just work it back and forth. Tap it here and there. It takes a little while to do this. But once it gets going, you'll start to see a pattern and you'll start to see the leaves and stuff starting to form. And that's what we're really doing is we're, we're forming tree leaves. That's the main thing. We want all them leaves to start showing up. But we're going to add some more paint to this a little bit later. We're just kind of smoothing it out some with the and making some rough textures for the, for the leaves to be sitting on, basically. And kind of keep in mind about where you want, you know, trees to be, where you, where you want the branches to be coming out, the leaves to be showing. Looks like quite a mess, doesn't it? Don't get frustrated with it because, believe me, it may look messy. And you may think, oh, this is a disaster, but it's not. Be patient and just keep working it. As you can see, you can start to see now the the leaves are starting to fall in. They're starting to fall in place, and we're gonna we're gonna get even more leaves here shortly. This is basically like a a block in background for the leaves. I'm trying to keep my my brighter colors more in the middle at the moment we're gonna see I added some I just took that tin foil roll and I just went right down into the yellow paint and grab and grab some and I'm very gently just tapping it on different places here and there I just keep tapping it on wherever I think I need to have some more yellow if you want to have more green colors or orange or the Indian yellow, just grab some more of that. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's not the whole idea. The idea is I'm giving you the basics on how to do this as I learned it myself. And I'm certainly no expert in this particular painting style. But I really liked it and I really thought people could have fun with it. Anybody can do this. It's not, it's not a hard thing to do. As you can see now, we're starting to starting to see some leaves we're starting to see some tree action a little bit once we put the trunks in we'll be adding some more leaves then again but first we want to get this background done we've got kind of the mid tones in there and the mid background it's starting to come forward a little bit more and we're pushing some of the the, the fuzzier blurrier stuff in the background a little bit and that's what we want we want to actually show a little bit of distance and a little bit of a 3D effect. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the knife here and I'm, I'm going to spread the paint out thin on the palette. I'm actually using a paper palette and um, well, I'm still doing a little bit of orange in here, I think. And I, I think I added a little bit of white. As you can see, that's what I did. I added some white because I wanted that sky to show through. And I covered it up. So as you can see, you can mess up and you can still fix it. And I messed up, so I'm fixing that. I probably should have left more of the sky, but that's okay. I'm fine with it the way it is. And I'm maybe adding a little bit of green to it here. We'll see in just a minute. Now I'm adding some yellow, just with the with the very end of the uh, knife. I just kind of slide it along, grab a little bit of that yellow, just move it around. I'm kind of making branches with of leaves that's really what I'm doing here I'm just making the idea it doesn't have to be perfect just putting the idea of some of those where them the clumpier leaves are basically and you don't want to go in straight lines you know you're gonna move it around some and you can fix that and I did that right there I got a little bit more straight lines you just go back over with your tin foil and and uh, Make them fade in a little bit. So we got quite a bit of yellow in there. It's really pretty bright from this angle here. See, so I'm taking the tin foil now, and I, I realized that, well, those are a bit too many lines basically just a little bit too many so I'm thinning them out a little bit making them look a little better but we've got endless coats that we can put on so I'm not worried about too much right now so I'm just more concerned with getting the basic layout I'm kind of looking over it now. I'm, I feel pretty happy with the way it's going here. So now I'm getting some Payne's Gray and I'm gonna mix some Payne's Gray with just a little bit of burnt umber. If you don't have the Payne's Gray, just use black. And if you want it to be a little bit lighter in color for some reason, add a little bit of white to it. Now this at this point, this paint is pretty thick and it's still pretty wet, even though it's acrylic. Uh, we did spray a little bit with water. Uh, you gotta be careful about that in the beginning. Don't don't miss it too much. So, and I sprayed the paint itself, which keeping it from drying. So it's still pretty wet and it's pretty thick. So now we're going to go ahead. I'm giving a little bit of time here because I want it to dry a little bit. Well, I'm still adding some more yellow. Okay. I'm getting ready to put them tree trunks in. But I see here I wanted to get some more yellow highlights. And that's exactly what I'm putting in here. Some more highlights. Because I know them branches are going to be going right up into those leaves. Now the one thing I didn't do that I probably should have done is, and you'll see when I get down to the bottom here, when you do your trees, bring them down into the water um, later after you get going into the water. I didn't do that. I had enough dark areas that it pretty much kind of covered the reflections a bit, but to make it even better than mine, bring your tree branches down in the water. Now they don't need to be perfectly straight across like I'm doing. You can move that brush around, or not the brush, but the knife around at different angles and whatnot too. Like I said, I've never done this particular style of painting. I've done knife painting 
lots of knife paintings, but this is a little bit different for me with the tin foil cell. I'm experimenting more than anything else. I want to see what can be done and, and uh, how to accomplish it. And don't get too carried away. I got, I'm getting a little bit carried away with this yellow here, so. But that's okay. Most likely I'm going to be putting some more different colors in there too, so. As you can see, we got layer after layer after layer after layer of, of paint. So it is getting pretty thick. We get a little bit of orange going back in there. Just keep working it out. You you'll get a feel for it eventually, and you'll you'll start feeling that painting of what you want it to accomplish. You want what you want it to look like. And you could play around with this for a long, uh, as long as you really want to, as long as you get the, as long as you keep that paint wet, you can just take your time and keep doing it until you get the exact colors you want. At some point in the future, I may just do this something like this again somewhat. And I think I might actually like to add more orange and probably some reds in there too. And maybe even some purples. Just a little bit of purple. So now I'm, I've already mixed my paint. Uh, the paint's gray and the burnt umber. And I actually add a little bit of water to that because you want it to be a bit thin because you're going on a thicker paint. So you need to thin it a little bit. And you may have to go over it a couple of times or so because you're basically making a pathway for them tree limbs. randomly wherever you want it doesn't matter where you put the tree limbs they don't need to be straight up and down they can be at an angle they can be twisted they can be as many as you want many branches as you want um, some of them are lighter some are darker and you want that to be that way you want light and dark mid-tones you want different um, strengths on that color of the branches because they're not all the same color. And you could go a little bit further and actually add more texture to these if you wanted to later, but I would advise letting it dry some. Hopefully y'all weren't picking up that music with the mic too, but I mean, it should have music here, but I didn't want you to get too much music. You want something relaxing so you can relax while you paint. It should be relaxing. Painting should be a relaxing and enjoyable experience. You shouldn't be stressed here at all. You should be just relaxing. Just Take it easy and go with the flow. Just, just let it go. There's no such thing really as a perfect painting. They're all perfect. And it's all in the, on the beholder. And if you like it, that's all that matters. If other people likes it, that's even better. As you can see, I've had to go over that same tree a number of times because that paint was pretty thick in that area. Now I'm just I'm putting a little lines here and there, indicating where branches are until I get to where I want to go a lot further down and wider. 
And you can put as many trees as you want. I'm just, I'm kind of using them a bit more sparingly. But you can put as many trees as you want. And as big as you want. You can also take your knife and just put it on the side and pull it down in different areas and just basically scratch a few really thin trees out by removing a little bit of that paint with your knife. In fact, Bob Ross does that often. If you want some birch trees, change it to white. Use some white paint. Every, every now and then on the birch tree in different areas. If you, you know what birch trees look like, they get a little bit of black in them, a little bit of brown. Just put little dabs of it on the end of your knife and just dab it on. And you got some birch trees. So I'm coming back to this one because I knew it was, it was, was pretty wet. It's, it was a little bit difficult getting the paint to stick. So I let it dry a little bit and I'm coming back to it, which is fine. So all you gotta do is let it dry a little bit because it does dry pretty quickly. I want to make that a little bit darker. And that's what we're doing. But as you can see, now it's all coming together beautifully because that background was done. And even, even though it looked like a mess, that's what we needed. So now we're coming to the foreground where we add more detail and the detail up front is sharper. So it pushes the rest of it back and away from you in the distance. And in the distance it would be more blurry. And that's the beauty of it. It didn't really matter that much how it looked in the background. What's important now is we're doing the foreground and that's where the sharper details are going to be. These trees, you can make lots and lots of trees here. I, if I wanted to, I could just, I could take another half an hour probably and made even more trees. But for the sake of the lesson, I tried to control myself a little bit and not make too many. I'd like to have actually made more of a bit more of a forest in there, but I decided to take it easy. Now I'm just kind of pulling some trees in, but they're very light, and there's just not much to them. I'm just grabbing some of the background paint with it too, and making more tree trunks here and there. I'm darkening up that one. You can take that little thin liner brush. I think I'm using the actual the number one liner right now. And you can make some really small, thin, scraggly looking branches. As you can see, I didn't even really bother to make a straight line for the horizon right there. Didn't really need to. Um, we're going to fix all that when we get down to the water anyway. I've got my paint on the palette. When I start adding paint, I'll just be doing the same thing. I'll be just adding it on from the palette with a knife. Now I'm actually going over some of the branches here and there with some more leaves to push them branches back where they belong and 
to make him more natural looking. So this is the, the most important part of your leaves here. You really want these to look, to stand out really well. Here's where you can fix any of your little mistakes and boo-boos like I made, and which is what I'm doing now. I'm trying to correct some mistakes I made. And it's okay to make mistakes. That's part of being an artist. Sometimes they work out really great. Like old Bob Ross used to say, happy mistakes. In fact, I think William Alexander said the same thing. So, just go with it. Actually, I'm showing more white than there actually is in the paint there uh, because I'm getting light reflections. I just noticed that. If you're looking toward the left there, it looks like there's a big kind of a gappy yellow uh, white area it's not white it's actually yellow it's just a uh, reflection from light but that covered it up well I'm doing that I remind you when you're done after it thoroughly dries and it'll be dry within hours Get yourself some conservative varnish of some sort, whether it's a gloss or a matte finish, whatever you prefer, so you can spray it, the whole thing. You know, at least one or two thin coats to help protect your paint and make it last for many more years. And make sure you sign it, and always sign the painting on the back, put the title of your painting there, and the date. Those are very important things for, especially if one day you want to put it in a gallery or in a show or something, put that information on the back. It's very important to do that. And I forget to do that myself a lot. So that's why I'm bringing it up to you, reminding you to do that. Some artists will actually keep a, a log of their paintings and they'll actually assign serial numbers. Maybe they'll use their initials with a date or something or they'll figure out whatever algorithm they want to use. So now we're starting with the bottom here. I'm actually adding some uh, burnt umber here because I want it to be darker in that area right there. I'm actually just going to go ahead and put the paint on as I go. I could have dabbed it all on like I did to begin with. And you can do that if you want to. But I decided to just put it on with a knife. I'm basically looking for, you know, how I want the terrain to be. With that burnt umber there, and, and you could add some black to that and very easily make some rocks if you wanted to have some rocks right there. Now, basically, I'm pulling down because... I really want those edges and everything to be darker. I want to make sure that we're getting right up to the tape mark. And I'm going to actually make my horizon line now. So you don't need to be able to draw a straight line. You can make your horizon line wherever you want it to be. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight across. If you were doing probably an ocean type scene or a seascape or something like that yes more than likely your horizon line you really want to be straight as an arrow because you probably wouldn't see any waves way back that far anyway okay so now I'm adding darker colors I'm adding the green sap green burnt umber and you probably notice it's a bit darker than burnt umber I added some a little bit of Payne's gray to it also well, now we're going with the uh, cad yellow. I actually added uh, a more of a lemon yellow on the top. That's why that yellow is brighter, by the way. I didn't put that in the list, but there is a lighter lemon yellow that I added last. Because the cad yellow I used was a medium and it was a bit darker. So now I'm adding some of that lemon yellow on the bottom too for the reflections. So 
So now I'm basically just putting on paint, just like we did up, up top. We're just basically putting in the colors that we want, where we want them. And we're reflecting those colors in the water. So as you can see, I'm making sure there's some green up top there to reflect the green branches and, the, and shrubs and whatever. And then I'm making sure that there's more yellow toward the bottom. And the orange and uh, Indian yellow. And you might even could use Naples yellow. Now I'm taking that brush and it's like with Bob Ross, when you pull the paint straight down, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just pulling this paint straight down. Uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna overwork it too much. I'm just gonna keep pulling it down, make sure it's smooth and it's filling in all the, the canvas is being filled in, making sure you got paint throughout the whole canvas. And this is the part here once you finish this particular part, this is where you want to make sure you you can draw your tree trunks down into the water. And that would look even better. I didn't do it this time because I had I had plenty of darks right there and stuff and I just wanted to uh, go ahead and just put the water in the way it was. But technically, I should have put some tree trunks down there. And it would have looked even better. But I'm still adding more dark in different areas here. And I'm pretty sure I'll, you'll see that I, I'll add even more dark toward the middle there, around where the tree trunks are. So that makes it a little bit more forgiving that way is for me not putting the tree trunks in. Now I'm adding some more burnt umber on the shoreline. But now I'm making like some bankings right there. About the same as if you was doing a wet and wet Bob Ross painting. Okay, so we've got some darks in there. All the greens, the, pur the uh, orange and everything. And now we're going to add some of the white, which is for the reflection of the sky. And this will also, doing these lines horizontal will make that water show up way better. And give the illusion of that sky reflecting. Now, I didn't run across it with the brush like you with a Bob Ross painting. Uh, I'm just going this route right here. But we're going to actually add some, some leaves into the water and some little areas of uh, maybe clumps of dirt, whatever, that had leaves on them and stuff. So now I'm adding some yellow. So we're getting some like leaves in the water, some movement to the water. I'm, I'm kind of letting this smudge a little bit here and there. And you can like, take your brush very gently on the on the bottom of wherever the colors are and pull them out too a little bit and give you some more water movement, so to speak. yellow you want there, orange or whatever colors, green. <clears throat> Good practice painting. This is a great painting. You know, probably anyone could do this painting. It's it's not a stressful painting. It's very a very good way to get started painting. It's, it's simple and you get a really nice painting when you're done so I think we're done and uh, make sure you sign your name on it be proud of it 
and uh, we're going to pull the tape off now and see what it looks like with its basically we're using the uh, canvas itself for a frame ain't that beautiful see how simple that was very easy painting to do very relaxing thank you all for watching I appreciate it be sure to subscribe like share click that bell so you get the future notifications on my paintings we do have a live stream every single night at 1030 if you subscribe you'll get a notification for it so y'all take care happy painting and I really appreciate you watching my videos please comment if you have any questions, or if you just want to leave a comment, that's fantastic too. And come back and see us. We love having new people around. Take care and thank you very much.